Well, hello there, everybody. It is Tuesday, January 6, 2008. Now, it's important to keep in mind that the Wizards have, by far, the worst record in the Eastern Conference. But after tonight's game on CSN Plus, the schedule actually opens up a little bit. Welcome in Frank Hanrahan of ESPN 980. Frank, uh, you get any good vibrations from this team right now, or was that win over the Cavs uh, a little more than uh, some brief relief on an otherwise abysmal campaign? I, I think it's a bit of uh, relief for the Wizards, Russ. And I say this because they play Cleveland very well. That Christmas night game, they pushed the Cavaliers to the limit. Refs helped out the Cavaliers a little bit. And then the other day, they actually stepped up defensively and locked down LeBron James, and they get the victory 80-77. What, what bothers me is their consistency, and I think that comes back to youth. They've got Jamison, they've got Karan Butler, but then it, it, what are you going to get from Nick Young night in, night out? What do you get from Don McGuire? What do you get from JaVale McGee? We know what we get from Sangaila, Jamison, Butler. It's time to look towards the future and start using these young guys more. Uh, Orlando, tough test tonight. I mean, Mike James has played very well. Good acquisition, but they're 7-25. and 25. Where is this team going? And then you get word that Arenas is thinking about coming back this season. Here's an idea. Don't wait till next year, Gil. <laughs> well, let's, let's not get into the next year conversation just yet. Oh, We're yeah. still at page two to get to here, Frank. So hold your horses for just a second. Let's talk about this team. Do you expect Ernie Grunfeld to actually make any moves, big moves, to shake up this roster? Or the Mike James and the Crittenton, is that sort of the way they go? Ernie Grunfeld, let's put his name out there because he fires Eddie Jordan. It was Eddie's fault, that 1-10 start, but you see it really wasn't. That was a big mistake. Uh, Ernie Grunfeld needs to really do something quickly to get this thing turned around. Do you, do you wait, and I know we're waiting to talk about Gil Arenas, but do you wait so much on him? Do you pull the trigger? I say with the record where they're at now at 7-25, you just play out the season, play the young guys, and again, wait till next year. And I think fans will understand that too, Russ. I think they understand that that's the hot ticket will be next season. So, again, wait till next year. All right, Frank Hanner and the half of the coaching staff is new. Continuity, I believe, mm -hmm. was what they were selling. I want to add about last night's game because you, you talk about continuity and starting and finishing strong. They didn't start well and they didn't finish well. And then that was the problem. And, and you see that at, at some point, this organization has to take a, a seat back and say, okay, we, we just got to stop talking. We just got to stop telling people what we're going to do and just do it. They are so PR uh, afraid of what, what people think. Paranoid? Paranoid. Stop worrying about what other people think and take care of what you can control. It's an old cliche, but I think this team and this organization and the players need to start well, doing And, and if you that. have a solid plan, if you have as well, you didn't see them five or six defensive well, touchdowns a year. Back to the players. Yeah, I mean, the talent of Baltimore is unreal. And Greg Blanche is going old school. He's saying just beat your guy and get to the quarterback. And listen, I watched Jason Taylor on several snaps last night, and I'm not saying he's mailing it in. But I'm saying he's <laughs> mailed it in. Yeah. I mean, I'm sitting there going, all he's doing a is, play, dude. is just going at his guy and, and stop, literally but stopping and not doing I anything. I think he's a microphone. Hey everybody, it is Monday, December 29th, 2008. What do you say we open the Redskins? Welcome back into the Comcast Sports 10 Studios to Washington Post Live. This, my friends, is the Whipple Roundtable. Frank Hanrahan of ESPN 980, Jason Lockenford from the Washington Post, and Les Carpenter from the Post as well. Those are some lofty goals there from, from the head coach. It's good to dream. Yeah, you know what I thought was interesting? He gave the players uh, a sheet of paper. He called them pursuits of what to do in the offseason. One of the quotes was from John Wooden. Yes. And I'm wondering how many of the players were like, who is this John Wooden guy <laughs> with these this? quotes about uh, how to approach the offseason? But yeah, was it on how to tie your shoes? And no, not, not, not how to shake hands, but it was about being active in the offseason, but actually having a goal in mind. Not just going out there and working on your craft, but getting better at your craft and trying to improve this football team. I thought today's uh, news conference was extremely interesting, guys, and your take on not only the tie, but the cufflinks as well. Apparently, we're getting from, from, from the generous above. owner. It is this the holiday season. And, uh, Time to give. Yeah. Dan Snyder likes those burgundy and gold ties, apparently. And Jim never fails to surprise, so that's always good. So. <laughs> well, what, what, what struck you as most interesting then coming out of the news conference? Today? What struck me was the fact that he, he talked about change. And he said, I don't think that we're going to lose 10 to 15 guys as what has been talked about. Vinny Serrano on Inside the Red Zone has said that he expects a big changeover about that many. But Zorn today is saying, I don't think it's going to be as much as people think. I think it will be. So and, he, and he also <laughs> said he doesn't expect any changes on the coaching staff. Another one I kind of say that's probably not going to happen. Well, especially that we're hearing that Jerry Gray, the, the secondary coach, is... 
why should the Redskins keep Vinny Serrato? <laughs> <laughs> You're asking the wrong crowd, Lonnie. Yeah. <laughs> Let me give you the number to Redskins Park. I'm sure you'll get right through to the owner, and he's got all the answers. I Hello? think that's. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, who's up next? I guess it's yeah. my turn. Uh, Lonnie, uh, well, here, here's the thing, and I, this is this is what my gut tells me. That beating Philadelphia, now a playoff team, helped not only Vinny but, but Zorn keep uh, their jobs for another year. And, and I think the next season will really tell if Vinny stays on board. That's just my gut, what I think. But he'll be back next year, like it or not. All right, will Inside the Red Zone be back? Uh, my gut also tells me <laughs> <laughs> about Inside the Red Zone that, that we, we may be back. There may be a few. Uh, see how the first presidential debate and economy aside, what are people talking about in the nation's capital? Uh, Steve, the Washington Redskins, 3-1. and one. They went to Dallas and beat the Cowboys last week. And again, they're underdogs this week, a big divisional foe in the NFC East and the Philadelphia Eagles. So all the, all the talk is about can the Redskins keep this going. They won three in a row. Now they go to Philadelphia, a healthy Donovan McNabb. The question is, is Brian Westbrook going to play despite that bad ankle? But confidence is high in D.C. with Jason Campbell playing very well, Santana Moss having Pro Bowl-type numbers, and Clinton Portis saying, hey, we're just tired of losing. We want to start winning some football games, and they have. They're 3-1, and one, but we'll see how they really are Sunday against those Eagles. A big test for Jim Zorn, who right now is riding the high of the, uh, the media love there. All right, so the, the, the Chicago Cubs certainly seems to be one of the biggest stories nationwide, not just in Chicago, but, Jeff, right. because you're there, we'll start with you, and then, mm -hmm. fellas, chime in. If the Cubs go down in L.A., is this the biggest choke job in sports this year? Watching the game last night, guys, I mean, if you, if you have the same feeling, because I certainly had the feeling of what is going to go wrong for the Cubs rather than what are they going to do to make it right. You just had that, that buzz in the stadium like, oh, God, here we go again. This team just doesn't know how to win, and, and it's amazing that basic fundamental stuff they've done since spring training can't even do it. It's all up here right now for this baseball team. They're in a lot of trouble, and give the Dodgers some credit. They jumped all over the Cubs team. They smelled the blood, and, and they ate them up last night. And right now, Oklahoma certainly is the number one team in the country. In three weeks from now, who knows? Could be entirely different. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing that's so frustrating about the college football setup. It really, you know, doesn't matter right now. Last year was the, the curse of number two, all those number two teams going down. And right now, it's that number one uh, team that's in trouble. I mean, USC goes down. Georgia, I thought, was supposed to be this other number one team. I mean, don't always believe what you think in terms of these, these preseason polls. I would love to see them start the polls in October. And have, a, and have a tournament. I know that's here nor there, but that, that's what they need. I mean, who knows if Oklahoma's number one? I have no idea. Here, here. I think I, I'm pretty sure we would all agree that a tournament would beat what they have going on right now. Guys, yeah. we are out of time. We appreciate the, uh, the time on air check. Frank Hanrahan from ESPN 980 in D.C., Mo Eggers from ESPN Radio 1530 in Cincinnati, and Jeff Dickerson from ESPN Radio 1000 in Chicago. Appreciate you joining us on pregame. Enjoy the weekend in sports.